Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this lecture, we are going to study the vestigial side band. Now, in the previous lectures, we discussed the double side band and the single side band. We also studied that the generation of the single side band is difficult. We studied three methods for generation: the phase shifting method, the, the selective filtering method, and the wave and waver method. For the phase shifting method, it was necessary for the message signal to have a DC null. Or in other words, the message signal needed to have a low frequency component. So that's why that was the drawback of the phase shifting method. In the selective, selective filtering method, we needed an ideal bandpass filter with a sharp cutoff. That was practically unrealizable. So that is why the generation of the single send side band was difficult. We also studied the, the double side band. The double side band required double the bandwidth. bandwidth. That is why we required a compromise between the single side band and the double side band. And that exactly what vestigial side band is. Vestigial side band is a compromise between the single side band and the double side band. It inherits the advantage of both the single side band and the double side band but awards it disadvantages at a very low cost. So for example, if you remember, for example, this is my message signal. Now, if you want to plot its double side band spectrum, the spectrum look like this, where we, I needed to have a bandwidth of 2B. Now, for the single side band, I have a spectrum like this. In the single side band, one of the side bands, either the upper side band or the lower side band was completely suppressed or rejected or removed, while as the other side band was accepted. Now, we are coming towards the vestigial side band, which is actually a compromise between the double side band and a single side band. And if you can have a look, in this case, we are not completely suppressing one side band. Instead, we are suppressing part of one side band. So in this case, we are transmitting one side band and the other side band is not completely suppressed as in single uh, side band carrier. In this case, one side band is completely transmitted and part of the other side band is transmitted. If you can see over here, this vestige, vestige actually means part of, part of something. Vestige actually means part of something or amount of something, part or amount of something. So in this case, what we are doing is that instead of suppressing the other side band completely as we did in the single side band, we are transmitting a part of this other side band. So we transmit one side band completely and for the other side band we suppress majority part of it and we allow a vestige of it, a vestige of the side band, a part of the side band is allowed. That is why its bandwidth is around 25 to 33 percent greater than the single side band and it is also easy to generate. So this vestigial side band is actually a compromise between the single side band and double side band. And this is the block diagram of generating the vestigial side band. And this is my vestigial shaping filter. And this vestigial shaping filter produces vestigial side band from the double side band. You can hear here if you can look and at here we have generated the double side band or the double side band suppress carrier. When this double side band signal is passed to this vestigial shaping filter, we get a vestigial side band. So let this filter be not denoted by HIF. Also remember that now this is not an ideal filter. So this filter is now practically realizable. So let the vestigial shaping filter be denoted by HIF. And this vestigial uh, shaping filter is going to allow one side band completely and the other side band it will allow only a vestige part of it. So it is going to suppress the majority part of the other side band and only allow some portion of the side band. So it will allow one side band completely and the a part of the other side band it will allow. And as a result we are going to get the vestigial side band. So this was for the transmitter side. And for the receiver side, I can recover the original message signal using the synchronous detection. But first let me write the equation of the vestigial sideband. So this is my vestigial sideband and this equation can be written as I am going to write over here. The equation for the vestigial sideband is going to be equal to 
m f plus f c plus m into f minus f c. Now this is the equation of my double side band suppressed carrier or the double side band, and this is going to be multiplied with the vestigial shaping filter, which is the H I F. So let me name it as equation one, and this is on the transmitter side. Now for the receiver side, let me. This is my balance demodulator. So we are going to use the synchronous demodulation, and for the synchronous demodulation, we are going to use the same carrier as on the transmitter side. So the in incoming vestigial side band is multiplied by two cosine omega c t. So let me write it mathematically, and the resultant function if is e of t. So in this case, e of t is going to be equal to e of t is going to be equal to vestigial side band multiplied by two cosine omega c t. So in that case, we are going to have two into vestigial side band multiplied by cosine omega c t. Now let me put this vestigial side band equation here. So I am going to put the vestigial side band equation over here, and as a result, we are going to get E of t is equal to vestigial side band f plus f c plus vestigial side band f minus f c. So this is going to be my equation, and let me name it as equation two. So this is my E of t function. When the incoming vestigial side band signal is multiplied by the same carrier, which is the two cosine omega c t, we get E of t, and which is this thing. Now the signal E of t is passed to the low pass filter, which is denoted by H naught of f. So as a result, we have M of t. So it means that E of t is multiplied by H naught of f. So we can write over here. That this m of f is going to be equal to the multiplication of e of t multiplied by the low pass filter, which is the h naught of f, which is denoted by h naught of f. This means that m of f is going to be equal to because e of t is my this thing, so this will be v s b f plus f c plus v s b f minus f c multiplied by or multiplied by the h naught of f. Now we are going to use this equation number one, which was for the vestigial side band F, and we have vestigial side band F plus F C. We are going to use this equation for both these terms, and then we are going to simplify. And also, we are going to eliminate the higher terms of plus minus two F C. So as a result, we are going to have the M of F, and we neglect the higher terms because we have passed it to the low pass filter. We are going to have M of F is equal to M of F. H I F plus F C plus H I F minus F C, and this whole is multiplied by H naught of F. And from here, I can take the H naught of F because this M of F and M of F will be cancelled, so which means that H naught of F is going to be equal to one divided by H I. F plus F C plus H I F minus F C for the frequency less than or equal to the bandwidth of the signal. So this is my transfer function of H naught of F. So when the E of T this signal is multiplied by this thing, this H naught of F, the resultant is the M of T or the M of F. So in this way we can recover the message signal on the receiver side using the synchronous demodulation. Thank you.